far are you going? About 30 years. Back to the future. And welcome back to the Supercast, everybody. I'm your host, the man who put the super in Supercast, the Super Foch. And as always, I'm joined by my good buddy and partner, Steve Z, the man who put the Z in Supercast. And we are talking about a movie that I just love. I adore this film. I adore the, the, all three of them, but the, especially this first one. Uh, what are your feelings on this film, man? Well, as you can see, I'm wearing the wolf shirt because uh, we're talking about the best Michael J. Yeah, Fox movie yeah. today, uh, Team Wolf. Yeah. I'm just joking. Uh-huh. I'm just joking. We're talking about Back to the Future, yeah. And I held that upside down. <laughs> yeah, Back to the Future, I agree with you. That's okay. Man, this was like a, a movie that I watched countless times growing mm-hmm. up. Like, right. It was an early VHS yeah. we got from like McDonald's or something. And mm-hmm. it was just the movie that I think the more you watch it, the better it gets. Um, as in, like, it's just like right. a rewatchable film. Uh, but it also, like, it was just a good movie that you could just put on any day of the week. Yeah. And that's just kind of what my sister and I is just like, anytime we didn't have anything to watch, just like, let's put this on. Uh, just yeah. a different, yeah. different world when we didn't have streaming, you know? I'm telling you, man, it's crazy. Um, I agree, though. I, I think Back to the Future is good for so many reasons many of which we will hopefully get to in this uh episode it starts with the actors in this film i think the performances in this film really across the board are pretty solid i mean you have uh, michael j fox who is just coming into his own when this movie came out and he just tears it up in this film he carries this film um for most of the movie, actually, and but he's surrounded, of course, by some great talent, including Doc Brown, played by Christopher Lloyd. What a performance he gives! What would you like to start with, uh, as far as this film goes, man? What what direction you want to start? Well, I guess just what I would say. It's not just the acting. It's it's definitely that, but it's sure it's everything for me. It starts with yeah. the script, and I think this is a film that just shows you great storytelling is the essential of any film. Mm. Yeah, I mean, yeah, it looks great. True. I mean, you got yeah. Dean Cundy as your director of cinematography. I mean, it's hard to get much better than that. Right. Um, especially at this time in the <laughs> 80s. Um, the direction's great. Yeah. Rock, Robert Zemeckis coming along good time. And like you said, the cast mm-hmm. is it's, it's pitch perfect. I mean, you could make a bone yep. about one or two or three performances, but by and large, <laughs> our leads are, are great, especially the chemistry between yeah. Doc and Marty, but we'll get into that later. Uh, but mm. for me, the storytelling is its just perfect, I mean, because this is a sort of a crazy concept. I mean, they're making up a lot of rules about time travel and things like that, uh, but right. at its core, is a, it's a compelling story of characters we really like, and um, at the same time, it's got a lot of zaniness to it, a lot of culture shock of going back to the 50s, just the weirdness of him and his parents interacting. Uh, it's just got so much going on, but at the same time, it, it doesn't feel bloated. It feels tight. It feels mm. like yeah. everything that's in the script is there for a reason, such as everything in the first act right. is kind of like a, it's going to have a call out later in the film. It's going to be some joke later mm-hmm. on mm-hmm. or something new in the scene. Uh, it's just a great movie from top to bottom, and the story to me is where it starts. Yeah, I, I totally agree with you on that point, man. Um, and there's a, there's a lot out there about this film, about the making of this film. Uh, Michael J. Fox was not the first Marty McFly. He was actually Eric Stoltz, who... Um, I can't remember, was he fired or did he just quit? I can't remember yeah, how the story goes there. Yeah, he got fired. Like They did like five weeks of shooting, and yeah. it just wasn't working out. They just... They wanted Fox to begin with, but he's kind of tied up with, with mm-hmm. family matters. Family 
Or not family matters, family, family ties. ties. He had the other one. <laughs> it's wrong the, family show. Uh, yeah, Michael J. Fox <laughs> as Urk Fox as Urkel. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he was tied up and then hired that Stoltz guy, and apparently he was like playing a sort of like uh, very sort of new wave ish, like sort of a rocker type guy. But at the same time, he just doesn't have that Michael J. Fox yet, you know? And. And that, I'm glad they fall for that, too. Yeah, I mean, that's the thing. This guy, Michael J. Fox, God bless him. He is uh, one of my favorite actors. He's just a really cool dude. I hate that he's suffering with Parkinson's. You see him in interviews now, and it's just so sad to watch him, uh, you know, like that. But, man, has he put out some good performances. Uh, not just in this movie, but the movie you just referenced at the beginning, Teen Wolf. That's also a good movie. That will probably venture down the road, uh, so stay tuned for that. Um, but with this movie in particular, um, I, I just I love the uh, camaraderie. I guess is the best word for that between Michael J. Fox and Christopher Lloyd, Doc and Marty, um, because you're kind of just thrown into that relationship. Like it, it's never really explained how they got to be friends or you know why or anything like that but the thing is at least for me and I'm sure you're the same way you don't really question it that much you're just like that's just how it is you know yeah <laughs> but um, I mean because they have a lot of trust in each other obviously with what Doc Brown's doing if we could somehow harness this light channel it into the flux capacitor it just might work Next Saturday night, we're sending you back to the future. It's just a, it's just a great fun ride. I mean, this, this, this movie is so much fun from, from the beginning, um, and uh, yeah, I just love it. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's pretty awesome, and you're kind of like going and I guess I'm building off the Eric Stoltz thought. I think if, if it would have been him, I just don't think mm -hmm. it would have been the same movie. I think Michael J. Oh, no. Fox and his performance. Is what sells this. I mean, you have to like Marty McFly mm. and want him to kind of like yep. get his parents together so he can have a future, you know? And, um. I mean, he's got a lot to do in this film. He does, and he pulls it all off. I mean, that's the thing that kind of mm -hmm. struck me this time watching it is Marty would just be like the coolest dude if he was like your friend. I mean, he's, <laughs> he's a great skateboarder. He's got an awesome girlfriend. He's really good at guitar. Um, but at the same time, he does have his character flaws, and that's that's a neat thing about him. He's definitely human, but at the same time, yeah. uh, Marty, in any situation, he could just pull something out of his butt mm. to, to kind of show, yeah, I can hang, yeah. I can just like think on my toes, do something. Um, especially these confrontations with Biff. I mean, the guy just, I don't know, oh, I don't know gosh, how he survives yeah. that stuff. Um, and but yeah. at the same time, I th I think Michael J. Fox, he's he's great because he can be both charming and mm. cool mm. Uh, but it's still kind of dorky too I mean I don't think he's as dorky as he is <laughs> in like Teen Wolf but at times yeah. he's definitely like uh, the physical comedy I think is what I'm, I'm trying to give him praise for he's got some awesome just falls yeah. or just like running mm -hmm. around the corner have these amazing surprised actions and just it's a great performance yeah. I mean what can I say about this guy he's top of the world after this and gets the praise for this as he should. I tell you what it reminded me of, and I never thought about this until the other night, and it was, um, it's almost like the Ferris Bueller character, you know? Ferris Bueller is kind of this, this Marty McFly type, you know? Uh, Ferris might be a little cooler, but uh, they're in the same kind of vein. They've got their flaws and everything, but they're cool, and everybody wants to be their friend, and... They're pretty. He's pretty smart too. So, uh, given the chance, which which character would you hang out with more, Marty or Ferris? Uh, I don't know. I mean, <laughs> tough choice, isn't I it? I think um, Ferris would probably be a good hang. You know, just like chill with him for a bit. Yeah. But mm -hmm. I I don't think he'd be as good a friend as Marty. I think I mean, well, as we've seen with him and Doc, I, I mean, think... he goes out on so many limbs for yeah. Doc. And same thing for even his dad, George McFly. He's a good friend to him whenever they're back in the 50s together. Mm. Which 
This is the weirdest thing ever yep. to talk about. I was, I was friends with my dad for a week, which is weird. <laughs> and, my, and my mom kept hitting on me. Oh. That's Calvin Klein. Oh my god, he's a dream. Good old Crispin Glover. Oh my gosh. Um, I don't even know if we want to tackle that subject right out, right out no, the gate. No, not yet. Let's, let's come back to that. <laughs> uh, but Yeah, let's put a pin in that one. But back to what you were saying. You, I, I think Doc and Marty, I think that's the big thing. And, and like mm -hmm. you said, you don't get an origin story. It's mm -mm. it's something that's just very odd that I just didn't question as a kid. Mm. Um, exactly, it was just mm -hmm. part of the thing, and it was just like I guess they're just friends. It doesn't. I mean, it's very odd that a sixty-something-year-old man would be or seventy, whatever Doc's supposed to be. Um, he's friends yeah. with this teenager guy. I mean, it's just cool. Um, but I guess we had a lot of. I think we I had heard... a lot of that back then. I mean, Mr. Miyagi and everything. So <laughs> it was right. the eighties. I think I rationalized it in my own head, if I if I didn't even say it out loud, that Doc and Marty were related when I was a kid. Like, somehow, that's why he was okay to hang out with him, because they were, like, his uncle or something like that. I, I feel like I, I rationalized that relationship that way, because otherwise, I never questioned any of it, yeah. you know, because it's just like, it's cool. <laughs> Maybe he was just coming in to use the big speaker, uh, and the, the big amp, I guess. <laughs> but uh, we don't get a story. But, but, I, but I think that's part of the brilliance, though, is we don't actually yeah. have to have that story part. It's sort of we were talking about like John Wick. It's like yeah. it's it's kind of better that it is mysterious and that you can make up the story yourself. Right. Right. And I mean, you know, you never know how how, how it could it could have gone you know hundred different ways. But um, their relationship is solid from the beginning, and their. Uh, just talk about the actors. Christopher Lloyd and Michael J. Fox play off each other really, really well. Like, um, I, that's something that I, you know, when we watch these films to get ready for these episodes, I've started watching these films a lot more uh, closely as far as uh, how the performances melt with each other. I don't even know if that's the right word. But, um, and Doc Brown and Marty work really well, and or Christopher Lloyd and... Michael J. Fox do, and I don't. I, if you were to ask me how, I, I don't know if I can put a pin on it necessarily. What about you? Is there anything in their performances together that just just they just have good chemistry? I guess. Yeah, it's the chemistry. It's it's mm -hmm. sort of the rhythm to the scenes they have together. They, there's not many pauses. Mm -hmm. Part of this is script, but no. I think it's them reacting to each yeah. other. Uh, it starts mm -hmm. with Christopher Lloyd, I think. I mean, the dude is... He's acting like a, a crazed mad scientist guy, but mm. a lovable mad scientist guy. I mean, we want right. him to succeed. Right. It's it's so cool to see how excited mm -hmm. he is when we first in, are introduced to him. He's like, he just created a time machine. Mm. And um, then right. in the 50s... Out of a DeLorean. Yeah, I think the 50s, <laughs> it's even better because we get to see... The different sides of Doc. Mm. We've seen how he's basically struggled, and mm -hmm. now he's got a great idea, and it's just he's not going to see it happen yeah. for 30 years. Uh, but mm -hmm. he's just great. I, it's all the way down to like how he can't pronounce gigawatts. I don't know why it's gigawatts in this movie, but I never. <laughs> once again, I never questioned that as a kid because I probably didn't know what gigawatts was. <laughs> but um, we got that <laughs> going. But it's just. This, it's just a weird performance, too, if you think about it. Uh, the guy builds, like, a model and stuff in his house, and he's so excited whenever he's like, okay, Marty, can I hook up the wires now? Let's let's see what it looks like. Test. I don't know. It's it's very funny performance. But, yeah, really good performance. Um, you mentioned Biff. Uh, Biff is an interesting character um, just because of how he is at the begin beginning of the film, and you go back in time, and he's... A certain way and then when things get uh, changed a bit he's a completely different character by the end of the film and I really liked his performance this this go around like I I've never been a biggest Biff fan which you know he's the bully so you're not really supposed to root for him but I don't know I just found him really entertaining this time around what's your what's your uh, thoughts on mr. Biff yeah he's got some good lines or like I guess they're mistaken <laughs> flub of lines like 
let's make it like a tree <laughs> and get out of here stuff like yeah. that he's got yeah. a lot of funny things and plus he's a, he's a good antagonist he's formidable but at mm -hmm. the same time it's great seeing him get his come up it's every single time and yep. um Yep. It's it's great and he because does. George gets it to him, but also Marty had to run every single mm. turn. So mm. good character, very funny. I mean, but at the same time, he he does have one scene where I think he kind of crosses the line. Uh, something I didn't realize was how oh, yeah. how menacing he is in that one scene where he's basically going to attack Lorraine. Mm. And so luckily, it's a PG yep. movie and it doesn't get beyond that. But that's <laughs> that's kind of rough. I mean, right. I thought he was just a bully, but. Apparently he's a criminal too. Yeah, I that surprised me too a little bit, but like you said, it could have got a lot worse. Um, but there was definitely some innuendo that I was like, okay, that's all right. We're gonna go there. Not cool. And I, <laughs> I guess we're going down the innuendo down that route. I guess we gotta go with Leah Thompson as Lorraine. Uh, I I think she's great. I think she, um, I really love her as, as the old mom at the beginning. I think that's just so funny how she uh, is, you know, how she is at the beginning of the film. You can go back in time and she's, of course, younger, a lot younger. Um, and then as things change, she becomes different. So uh, I think Leah Thompson's great in this film. I think she's funny. I think she's. Um, very pretty. I like, you know, she's a pretty actress, and I think she does a really good job of, 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 you know, playing that 1950s teenage girl thing. I, I think she did a really good job of that. Yeah, I think this might have been my favorite part of watching it this time, is because this was a part that definitely went mm -hmm. over my head as a kid. I did not understand the awkwardness yeah. of your mom having a crush <laughs> on you back. Uh, <laughs> It's just, I didn't get that. I mean, but now I'm like, that's the funniest yeah. thing ever. Like, that's pretty much most of the, it is, most it's of the comedy comes from that. Um, but Leah Thompson, yeah, she's great. Uh, like you said, uh, she plays a pretty good drunk whenever she's describing her life or something. And it's like, yes, when I met your father. Yeah. And uh, at the same time, when she's yep. a teenager, she's, she's so funny as like, just coming on to mm -hmm. to Calvin. She's like, oh, Calvin. Yeah. Oh, what a dream boat. <laughs> and it's it's so funny because he's not doing anything to yeah. turn her off at all. Like, everywhere he goes, no. he just charms her more. It's like, oh, he, he just showed Biff at the lunchroom or he just jumped into that cool skateboarding mm. thing. She's really going to like him now. And, like, it's, it's just very <laughs> funny uh, just seeing... This, this sort of back and forth between them uh, when really we, we know that yeah. she's supposed to end up with George uh, but, the same, but instead right. she's into her son which I guess it makes it even funnier when they actually kiss <laughs> yeah exactly um, so yeah so a lot of good performances here uh, any scenes or anything that sticks out that uh, either maybe you looked over or uh, you know maybe saw this time that you want to talk about um, I guess before we move much further, I gotta talk about one last performance, and that's uh, Crispin sure. Glover as um, George. Mm. Uh, this is see, I, I understood him when he, he did the teenage thing, but I didn't understand how great his performance is as the dad. Uh, whenever, mm. like, I was a kid, I didn't get that how mm. the, his stupid yeah. <laughs> That laugh, it's just, <laughs> it's perfect. And this guy's yeah, so annoying. Great. And then you see him as a, yeah. as a teenager, and, and I, I just can't imagine what it'd be like as Marty just to find out, my dad's a perv. He's sitting there, look. Yeah, and, yeah. And then after that, he's got to help him. And uh, my favorite scene, I mean, we were talking about the Michael J. Fox with Christopher Lloyd, but Michael J. Fox's scenes with mm. Crispin Glover has. He's trying to like build him mm. up and he's like, come on, George, you gotta ask her out and all that stuff. Those might be the funniest scenes. <laughs> and I know that's yeah. just typical scenes you need in a script, um, but also the ones that you gotta right. do to have like the budget down. But I just think I love those little simple scenes with just the two of them. Yeah, and that's something that kind of struck me too because um, 
you know, I'm, I'm not the biggest Crispin Glover fan, especially since I've heard stuff and everything, including the making of this film. But I do think his performance is very, um, very interesting for this film. I, and I think it really, really works. Um, it was surprising how well he worked with Michael J. Fox in those scenes that you were talking about when he goes back and he has to help his dad out. It was surprising how well they work together. And um, I don't know if that's just because Michael J. Fox can pretty much work with anybody, apparently, and do awesome. But, um, you know, I think that uh, of all the stuff you could say about Crispin Glover and behind the scenes stuff, um, I think his performance was really good. I don't think you would get a better performance out of another actor in that role. And so I think that it's really good. And I can I can look past the behind the scenes stuff because a I wasn't there. It didn't affect me. I'm just we're we're just talking about this movie here and and the performance on screen and everything he does on screen is really good. I mean, um, there's a few things that you you might uh, talk about, but for the most part, I think his his performance, like everybody else's, is pretty solid. You know, start to finish. Yeah. It's just really weird performance. I'll, I'll, that's my big takeaway from it. It's just really <laughs> weird. A lot of strange. Choices. Well, it's a weird character. Yeah, and that I guess that's the whole thing is he's got to make this guy come off heroic. And it yeah. is neat how he does come out of his shell and he does mm. rise to yep. the occasion. And um, yep. I will give Crispin Glover one piece of credit is I, I think he did have some integrity. He was not happy with the way that they changed. Mm-hmm. Uh, George's character in the right. future in 85 made him basically into a very mm-hmm. materialistic people. Uh, but I didn't realize yeah. until like preparing for this show that that's actually something that the filmmakers kind of used to say, see, we messed up. Uh, that's why your kids are terrible in mm-hmm. part two. That's why we got to get fixed. So huh. maybe you, you did something wrong there, Marty. You made your parents too good. And now uh, you're messed mm-hmm. up. I don't know. It's, just, it's something to think about, but I'm, I'm going off on a tangent. It is. But I think one thing about this film is it's timeless, but at the same time, it's, it's very mm. 80s. And I think one thing that makes it so <laughs> 80s and like of this moment is the Huey Lewis stuff. Yeah. Uh, but I would not take it out mm. at all for the world. What do you think about the Huey Lewis? No. Power of Love is one of my favorite songs ever. I mean, it's just, it's, it's like Ghostbusters theme and Power of Love, my two favorite, like, movie themes, quote unquote, because, I mean, come on, it's Huey Lewis in the news. And, uh, and of course, you know, the whole, and we won't go down this road, but the whole uh, ripping Huey Lewis off by the ghost, using for the ghost, which I don't think that's true at all, so I don't subscribe to that, but. So he comes back and he does this movie, and man, that, that song just kills, dude. And I love that Michael J. Fox is playing it. And uh, correct me if I'm wrong, Michael J. Fox is really playing the guitar in this film, like for real. Uh, I think no, he's not. He's, he did have somebody like really? give him lessons and stuff, but especially the Johnny, the okay. Johnny. I thought I had heard he Johnny was playing good stuff. He is not playing in that part. That is. Well, yeah, I knew that. Uh, I, I kind of figured that much. Ever, but I think maybe some of it's authentic. I mean, because I know he had lessons and everything. Mm. But, uh, but yeah. I, I, and I love the cameo, of course, you know, as the judge and everything. I thought that was pretty cool. So, yeah, I, I love this song. I mean, it's just like, uh, like I said, it's like uh, Ghostbusters, uh, Power of Love, and then, you know, everything else in the 80s. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> Power of Love really gives that first part of the film a lot of energy like mm. i can just hear the song dun, 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 and then just seeing yeah. marty getting on a skateboard grab on the back of the truck or car or whatever it's it's just a perfect it's like how did he do how did he pull that off is what i want to know because this is like that's just asking yeah, for an accident I mean, man <laughs> I, i'm sure a lot of kids did it after watching this movie they're just like Let's, let's try it out. Seems like a good way to travel around. But he, he pulls it off, and I think the Huey Lewis yeah. music really holds it together. But you can't forget that second song. Definitely. That song's been in my head, too, the Back in mm. Time. Um, so Huey Lewis definitely oh, yeah. attributes a lot yeah. to like the feel of it. Uh, but if you 
talk about music, you can't forget about Silvestri. The Alan Silvestri theme. Oh no. It's it's excellent it's, score. It's, any, it's good as anything John Williams did, I think. Yeah, I, I think it is right there. I think there is uh, it's a solid score from the start. And uh, of course you got the theme, you know, the Back to the Future theme, which is uh, that actually really does sound a lot like John Williams right there. Uh, when it kicks into gear, you know, you're like, yeah, that's John Williams, I think. No, but <laughs> um, so yeah, I think the score holds up pretty well and uh, matches the Huey Lewis stuff pretty good. And yeah, it's 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 pretty solid, I think. Yeah, the whole movie's just tight. I think the e- the editing, oh, man, the yeah. pacing, uh, just how like one line will end and then it goes to the next scene. It's I mean, mm-hmm. it's just like a movie that. I wish they made more of. It seems like nowadays we get a little too bloated with our stories. This one's just got yep. bare bones essential. Yeah. It it leaves you wanting more, and that's a really cool yeah. thing to do. And um, yep. I think that's a big part of this this whole film and how what it's all about. Yeah, I was surprised how fluid this film goes, like how fast this film really goes, because it's like. Um, there's there's really no scenes that just slow it down. I mean, you could almost say the uh, scenes in the parking lot of the mall before he goes back future, you know, that kind of slows it down a little bit for the whole Einstein thing. But once he gets to the 50s, it's like boom, 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 you know. And I'm like, wow, this movie's almost over. Oh, so yeah. uh, the pacing of this film was really uh, surprising how fast it went. Yeah, so the so the pacing really surprised me how quick this movie went um, but just so fun I mean every scene is is uh, either hilarious or interesting and uh, yeah I, I thought it was really good yeah I totally agree I mean it it just flows really well and especially that mm-hmm. last 20 30 minutes they do a good such a mm-hmm. good job of building the stakes uh, we see mm-hmm. them go on this date. And then it gets complicated because Biff shows up, and then George yep. has to rise up. But then guess what? This is just the breather because it's not all solved. Now we gotta, Marty's gotta play at the school dance, and then we get the whole <laughs> Johnny Be Good, which. Oh, I love that scene. Yeah, can you believe it? They were gonna cut it. Man, that would have been a travesty. I, I, I love that scene. I think that's fantastic. I mean. Yeah, I know he's probably faking, you know, playing the guitar, but it's still awesome. Oh, yeah. It's still cool. Oh, yeah, that was... And it, it makes you believe. Definitely, and it it was so fun watching that as a kid, and it makes... Yeah. It's even funnier now, the, him out there shredding yeah. Eddie Van Halen, Jimi Hendrix style. <laughs> um, when these guys haven't even heard uh, Buddy Holly and the Crickets yet. It's just funny to think about. <laughs> yeah. Um, but, yeah. Yeah. That's It's a silly scene, but... There's a lot of silliness in this film, and I think that's what makes this movie so great, is that, yeah, there's a lot of silliness going on, mm-hmm. but it's still just so fun. Uh, that's, that's the thing about this film, oh, yeah. is the fun factors all the way to 10. Yeah, the smile's on my face the whole time, and mm. even after that, we get the whole sort of climax. It's, will he... Everything gets complicated as they're trying to... The, mm. the clock tower racing against time yep. literally yeah and it's it's very <laughs> satisfying just everything coming together the mm. editing the music performance by the actors uh, and it's just one of those if you just cut it a little bit differently it, it doesn't work I don't think or you take out the mm. score if you change anything that mm. last little bit does not work um, but thank god it does it's, it's just beautiful filmmaking yeah I totally agree with that um one performance we haven't talked about yet, um, but I think it's a good time since we're kind of wrapping things up here, is Marty's girlfriend is Jennifer Parker. And if you don't know anything about these films, she's played by Claudia Wells in this film. But in Back to the Future 2, which picks up directly at the end of this one, uh, it's played by a different actress. And I'm here to tell you, um, and I know we're not talking about Back to the Future 2, but I think it's a complete downgrade on actress, man. I, I think that Claudia Wells was a much better J- 
Jennifer, and uh, in fact, she is on TikTok, and I've actually commented on some of her stuff, and she's acknowledged me. So yeah, I've I've talked to Jennifer. So yay, go me. <laughs> All right, I don't really have an opinion on it. I mean, I think she's doing a lot to be with Marty. I mean, she's. She, it's, yeah. it's funny because Marty, he's he's doesn't seem like he's got it all together at the beginning of the film, and she's all about him. She has you know, the hots for him. She she loves him. Hey, so. you know she's a teenager. Yeah, it's 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 young love, my friend. I guess it's that charm. Young love. Uh, I mean, because but it's pretty impressive. I mean, the dude carries a lot of clout for a five five dude. <laughs> hey, like I like I said, it's it's. He, it's it's a lot like Ferris Bueller. Yeah. I mean, it's it's similar anyway. Yeah, I could see. Um, where, I mean, John Hughes definitely probably looked at this film as inspiration. Mm-hmm. But again, this 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 film is timeless. It's classic. Um, is there anything you want to say towards the end of this? Any kind of a critique or anything that you would change? Um, anything that's just glaring uh, to you, just to get it out of the way, so we're not just you know. Well, fanboying the whole time. I mean, I know there are definitely critiques you could make as far as like plot holes. Uh, right. Everybody always brings up, how come the parents don't recognize Marty whenever they have him? Like whenever he's like a teenager, it's like, oh yeah, you remember that guy that we met back in the 50s? <laughs> um, there's a lot of people that get mad about that, but I'm like, yeah, the movie's entertaining. It flows well. Exactly. You don't question exactly. it while you're watching it. So that's mm. what it is. I I think there might be one performance that you could critique a little bit. It's Crispin Glover it might be just a little too weird at times. He's barely mm-hmm. not relatable. It might you say, like, Lorraine, even if he does knock him out, are you going to really marry this guy and stick with him? I don't know. <laughs> but I don't think yeah. it's, it's a movie that you have to totally destroy uh, for its plot holes or its story. I think everything that's working works. Right. No, I, I completely agree with you. Um, and I think this movie is... It's supposed to be fun, and it is fun. Uh, if you don't find this movie fun, that's okay. That's your prerogative. Everybody has their own uh, taste. And, you know, we don't want to say that our taste supersedes anybody else's. But uh, I think that this film does what it's supposed to. It entertains me. It makes me smile. And I love every performance. I love every character just about in this film. And I'm a huge Michael J. Fox fan. I know you are too. And I just think he kills it in this. And I just, I am, uh, like I said, I'm so sad to see uh, how he's gone downhill because of his Parkinson's later in life. But this movie will, will be part of his legacy. I, you know, when you mention Michael J. Fox 100 years from now, People go like, oh, Back to the Future. That's his, you know, that's one of his biggest hits. And now, of course, there's two more sequels in this franchise, and maybe we'll get to those at some point. But I do think this is probably the best film of the three. Yeah, I think it's the best. I mean, the other two really have to build off each other to to, right. to work. But I think this one could have just been its own standalone. And it would have been still very memorable. And it's, it's mm-hmm. a very kind of rare movie. We don't really see too much anymore. It's a huge right. movie, blockbuster, successful across many demographics. And it's not mm-hmm. a, a rig- I mean, it's, it's an original IP. It was like his own thing. It wasn't based off of anything. Yep. Uh, it's ju- and yep. it's just about a high school kid going on these adventures with his crazy scientist friend. It's It, it should work. It seems too silly, but it just catch lightning in the bottle or lightning start the clock tower or whatever and it it's beautiful and it works of course it's fun to cartoon rick and morty that's a definite you know yeah. thing from that so so yeah i mean this this film is timeless and it's great and if you've not seen this film and you're doing yourself a disservice my friend you, just, you are so go see it i'm not saying you have to love it like we do um of course not but I think you'll at least have a good time with it. Um, and I, that's, that's my story. I'm sticking to it. <laughs> Sounds good. And then if you want to get a bonus feature, dun, 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 you know. We'll, we'll, we'll tackle that one pretty soon. 
that that's got its own classic that's it's a classic on its own so yeah we'll definitely do that but hey guys thank you so much for joining us here on the supercast we really do appreciate it uh please follow us on youtube at supercast with a z uh, follow us on twitter at supercast and let us know what you'd like to hear or uh see us talk about because we love suggestions and uh just look forward to your comments and your thoughts on this great film uh, for my buddy Steve Z, I am the Superfoch, and we'll see you guys next time on the Supercast. <laughs>